Hey, Flooring Pros, um, Jerry Levinson here, and I'm going to uh, wrap up our sales training uh, with just a soup to nuts review of what we're doing. Uh, I'm not going to continue on with this flooring sales training. We're going to probably be introducing some new programs, working with FloorZap to introduce their product and systems on, on really how to systemize your business. Um, so sales training will be a part of that as well. And, uh, but most of what we're doing is it, it's fairly simple, a review of, of the sales training. Everything that I've taught you so far are just things you need to um, review and repeat. And um, you can even go through this whole segment and get a lot out of it, but listening to it frequently or you know, uh, for those of you that are sales managers or business owners, you need to listen when your salespeople get jammed up um, and figure out a way to answer a, a complicated question that a customer may have asked you. So something I did, this is how I developed this whole program was by listening to my salespeople. And every time they got jammed up with a question, I'd go to the whiteboard and figure out a way. It's like, all right, how can we answer this? a little bit more smooth and, and come up with a good answer that satisfies the customer and doesn't force us to like lower our price or drop our pants or anything. So <laughs> you can do that yourselves and you guys should be actively doing that. As a salesperson, anytime you don't get the job, are you figuring out why or just ask yourself what you could have done better? You, we all got to do this. So sales training is all about being prepared. You know, when they ask you a certain question that you're prepared with the answer. Um, it's just like any athlete, you need to train, you need to practice, and you need to build your selling muscles, all right? It takes practice and you get better and better at it all the time. So everything starts with this one question, you know, tell me about your project. What are you working on? So remember, it's better to understand than to be understood. Huge lesson for me was when I realized, look, I don't even really matter in the equation, how long I've been in business and how good and knowledgeable I am. That's not as important as understanding why they want to do their flooring right now, uh, when they would like to get it done, what products are, are they going to love, you know, what, what's going to help them make that decision to buy from me. It's usually all about them. And if I can focus on them, their project, their decor, their lifestyle, then I have a much better chance than I do lecturing them about why this product is the best or lecturing them about why they should do business with us. You know, I'm not interested in telling them what they should think. I want to know what they, what they think, what they believe. If they ask you what you charge, Tell me about your project. What are you working on? If they're looking to match a piece of tile, tell me about your project. What are you working on? So if they're requesting flooring you don't carry, tell me about the project. Because from there, it leads into, here's an idea for you. You know, if you're open to this, then I've got an idea or a solution that's going to help you with this, this challenge. Um, then how long do you plan on living in the home? You know, look, if they're selling the home, that's a whole different story than if they're going to live there three to five years. So do they plan on living there three to five years? Are they raising a family there? Um, are they going to live there the rest of their lives? I love that question. How long do you plan on living in the home? And then, of course, if they're living there longer, then you want to know what kind of action they have going on in the home. Very simple. All about them, Right. Do you know what you're looking for or would you like us to bring a selection out? Um, a lot of people don't know what they're looking for. If you ask them what color do you like, um, you ask them what it is, uh, like do they want a carpet pattern? Do you want a plush? Do you want a polyester or nylon? They don't know the answer to these questions. So ask them, get in the habit of asking, do you know what you're looking for or would you like us to bring a selection out? the vast majority are going to say, yeah, that'd be great. Can you bring a selection out? That would help us out so much. So you want to make it easy for them to schedule the in-home estimate. 
again, I don't think I covered this really, um, but when you're scheduling that estimate, give them times, you know, say uh, I can be there tomorrow between three or would five o'clock work better for you? Don't say what time works for you because they're going to come back and say, give you a time that you're busy. So instead of playing that game, always make the suggestion, what time works best for you? Um, if that's not your process, that's not your system, then be prepared to invite them into your showroom if that's how you want to do business. Um, explain to them your process. Oh, yeah. So here's how it works. We have people come out to our showroom, look over samples. I'll, I'll have you bring home a couple of samples. Uh, we have our measure guy. He's going to go out there and measure the house. And um, then you come back into the showroom and we do the selection, give you the estimate. And this is how we give you a five star experience. You know, talk about your process um, and make it sound thought out and kick ass. So they want to do business with you because you've thought it through. Again, if you're asking a budget question, ask them, do you have a budget in mind or are you trying to get an idea? Most people do not have a budget in mind. They, they have no clue what this is going to cost. So they don't have a budget in mind. And normally, anybody that does have a budget, they're way off. They can't get it done for what they think they're going to be able to get it done for. You know, you might be thinking you're going to do your living room and I'm ready to spend some money now. I just got tax return, got 1500 bucks, burning a hole in my pocket. I'd like to get this done. And then you come to find out it's a $4,500 pro, uh, project for what you want. You know, again, happens all the time. They just haven't a clue. They don't buy flooring enough. That's why all the price increases don't really matter. Because again, they don't know how much things have gone up in price. They don't know how much shipping has gone up in price. They don't really have something to compare it to. You know, I just went to McDonald's and I get this cheap meal that usually costs me five bucks and it costs seven fifty for the same exact meal. I know that went up, you know, 50% in price, but if I'm buying a product like flooring installed, I haven't a clue what it, the price is, what it is. And I even though they have gone up dramatically. So nobody, I, I, people are still, busier than they've ever been. Sales are still better than they've ever been. So people are still buying the flooring. Again, I think times are going to get tough. They're going to get a little lean. You're going to have to learn this stuff and become a better salesperson. Um, ethically show them something more expensive, uh, especially when it's in their best interest. So somebody expressed the fact to you that, you know, their budget is again, $1,500. Well, you know, is it, really doing them a service by selling them something that cheap when they've got a lot of activity going on in the house, when you know whatever that flooring is going to be ruined shortly, that's not ethical. If you know that's not going to work for them, that's not going to hold up for them, then to me, it's unethical to show them something when they express that they have this low budget. You know, ethically explain to them that you know, this is normally what it's going to run. You know, I understand that, you, you know, that might be more than what you were thinking, but once they wrap their head around it, they're fine, you know, and now all of a sudden, okay, well, maybe $1,500 was too low. I'm willing to go up to 3,200, you know, but 4,500 is too much. So at least they're moving in your direction some, and they'll come up a little bit more to get what they want. Uh, you might have to budge a little bit on your price play the game, you know, it, it does work. So, but when you show them something beautiful, when you show them something that they want, they will raise their budget, it happens every time. So again, have fun with this, show them something that they're gonna love, it's gonna look gorgeous in their home. Now, do some decorating. Closing the sale, this is, uh, I, uh, I follow for uh, uh, oh, 2009 uh, and uh, nothing and um, just really left and right. So I picked up Tony Robbins tapes and, and that really helped me get through that. 
after that, um, I was like, okay, Tony Robbins is a self-improvement guru. I want a business guy. Um, I'm a pretty positive person. So I wanted somebody that was good business. Uh, so Chet Holmes is a business guru and uh, teaches all the stuff. He's passed away, unfortunately, but I really enjoyed his material. So one of the things he says about closing the sale, and I say this often to you guys, look, if you believe it's in the customer's best interest to use you over anybody else, then you have an obligation to close the sale as hard as possible, okay? It's your responsibility because you know that a customer is better off going with you than somebody else. So you have a responsibility to try and close that sale. Another closing technique, give them the price and shut up. And the rule is the next one that speak loses. Um, I've taught you guys closing techniques. You can revert, review some of that. None of them had to do with breaking it down to the ridiculous or kind of lecturing them that it's only the cup of coffee a day. I, I hate stuff like that. Um, and no hard sales tactics, uh, but there are really good closing techniques. Uh, offer them a convenient way to pay. If you have 12 months, same as cash financing, give them the price. What is that going to cost a month? It doesn't take much to take whatever the, the total price is and divide it by 12 or divide it by 24 months. Um, some of those financing fees are high, especially for the 24, 36 months. If you need help building that into the price, let me know. I'll show you exactly how to build that into the price so it's not costing your company money. Schedule the installation. Just get an idea of when you can install it and try and nail them down on the installation. Um, you're, you're assuming the sale. So if they can, schedule the install and you close the sale. Once you schedule that install, the sale's closed. Now you just take the deposit. Ask for the sale. <laughs> that's, that's something, you know, let's get started. Can I, you know, get a deposit from you? I had a customer one time, oh, I want to get other estimates. Well, you know, I said, honestly, they're going to be right around the same price I am. I'd really appreciate it if you go with me. Um, I'll never forget I did that once. And the price was really high. It was window coverings. And the customer's like, oh, all right, let's go ahead and do it. You know, it, they just needed that little nudge, you know, and I just simply asked for the sale. I didn't do anything fancy. Follow up, follow up, follow up. If they didn't go with you, then follow up. Call and see if they want to go with you, you know, and don't feel like, oh, I don't want to bother them. Um, today, I just bought a list of 700 flooring dealers across the country. Um, I checked with that guy, oh, four months ago and had a, a, a marketing company that does, uh, emailing campaigns that I was using and I, I didn't like the service. So I never ended up buying this list. This guy stayed with me and stayed with me, kept asking every, about every two or three days, Hey, are you ready to do this now? Did you get things worked out? Ready to go? Ready to go? You know, and that was a $400 sale. It's not a huge sale. I was grateful that he followed up because I really did want to buy that list, but I just wasn't ready at that time, you know, and you've all done this before where you followed up and the customer said, oh, good. You know what? I'm so glad that you called me because it's something I've been meaning to get done. I just one thing after the another. So call them, see if they want to go with it. They're busy. Okay. So so help them take that off their plate, get the order. You know, you're doing them good. They're going to give them beautiful new flooring. Go for it. Send them an email. If you send them an email, don't vomit all over the email. Keep it short. You know, hey, you ready to go with the order now? That's good enough. You know, um, you don't have to say this will look beautiful in your home. The sales ending, blah, 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 blah. You don't have to do that. If you keep it short, you'll get a response. And that's what we're all looking for is at least a response. This works really good. I just had somebody reach out to me about the nine word text said, you know, he learned about this in the master class, bought it back to his people and they all laughed at him, said, that's stupid. That's not gonna work. I'm not gonna do a nine word text. And they all started doing it. And lo and behold, they started closing some jobs that were in the pipeline. At least maybe they didn't close some of the jobs. I mean, they didn't close all of them, 
but at least some of the people responded, hey, no, thanks, we went with somebody else, or no, we're not going to do anything at this time. You know, at least they got a response, which that's what the nine word text is, is meant for. Are you still interested in doing carpet in your living room? Period. And sometimes the response is, who is this? Well, guess what? If you get a response, who is this? You started a conversation. Now I can talk to them. If they don't respond to you, then that's not yes, that's not no, that's nothing. That, you know, at, at least a no is better than nothing. You know, just give me some kind of sense, you know, can I put this lead away and, and forget about you? Or, you know, do I need to follow up with you again later? You do deserve an answer. Respect, this is about respect. If you want customers to respect you and your time, you got to respect yourself and know that you deserve an answer, right? So look, like everything else in life, practice it, review it, improve on it. You can always get better. We're all, you know, I don't care how old you are and how many years you've been doing this. We've all got stuff to learn. We are always have opportunities to learn and improve and get better and better and better. You know, one of the guys I really admire most is Jason Goldberg, who has just hitting on all cylinders. He came to a master class. He wanted to see what it was about and make sure it was worth it before kind of endorsing it, if you will. And he took away some stuff that he implemented in his business. Guy's running a $100 million business and he's listening to a schmuck doing $5 million a year, right? <laughs> so, I mean, he's so smart. He, he listens to everybody, considers what everybody has to says, say. He's always learning. He loves teaching. He helps anybody, but he'll learn, you know, and um, he's humble enough to, to learn from other people, even though he's way more successful than they are. And I've gotten that from Brian Elias, who's just wildly successful at Refloor and other people I've talked to that are just, you know, huge successes. They listen to other people who may not be as knowledgeable, but, you know, they always get something, you know, they're always looking for one little nugget, one thing that they can implement in their business is going to help. So, um, I'm not going to continue on with the weekly flooring sales training. We're going to probably do something else. I'm working with FloorZap. They've got their um, business systems that I just fell in love with. The program works great. So I'm going to be launching that and helping promote FloorZap along with the business coaching that I do along with the marketing that we're doing. And we're planning on another masterclass probably in September. So uh, going to be busy with a lot of stuff. Um, reach out to me. I started the uh, coaching. I've got about half a dozen people signed up for that so far. So that's $500 a month and it's one-on-one -on -one coaching. So if you need the sales training, you need marketing, you need whatever you need to help you grow your business and succeed and profit now in the flooring industry, you know, reach out to me and let's see what we can do to make your business fun and profitable for you. Okay, guys, it's been great. It's been my pleasure and I will catch you later.